Welcome back, guys. Richard French, our season more, and you guessed it, we have another car video. It's time to pull the second motor we put in this thing out and put in the third motor. Because, well, this one's making noise. Well, see you guys in the next clip. We're going to get to it. While we wait for that one to drain, let's go take a look at the real truck. Oh yeah, she's a little sticky. She needs some lube. Yeah, real truck. So, future episode of Edge and Swap today. <laughs> I think that's what we're gonna call the series. Look at all this room. I'm gonna take the intake off of this and put it on my 72. We're gonna wrap this thing in plastic for a later date. I'm gonna pull the motor out. Finally. Might as well get a bunch of engine swaps done while I'm waiting for the garage to dry out inside. It got a little wet this year. The water ran inside the south door here. Right down the hill and inside, there's nothing I could do. Right across the freaking ice. Bastard. Freaking Matt Murphy guy, I tell you what. <laughs> anyway, gotta love that Murphy's Law guy. Yeah, it was that grinding water pump. I had this thing running for about 30 seconds. It has a bad freeze plug between the transmission and the block. First truck I ever worked on, I was eight years old. When I got handed a screwdriver and said, here, go pull that grill, kid. We're putting the cam in it without pulling the motor. All right, why not? <laughs> I'll start somewhere addicted to working on cars of all sizes ever since. And scales is what I mean by that. Now we got that pain in the ass fan shroud radiator out of the way. Man, what a pain in the ass that shroud is on Chevys. I get why it's there. Like, you need it to suck air and shit, but come on, meow. Not helping me out. Anyway, now we can get to these bolts down here. On the tranny mounts, <laughs> motor mounts, <laughs> got you. <laughs> anyway, undo the headers. Probably just gonna undo them down there at the collector and pull the whole header off. And then we'll undo the bell housing and torque burn, etc. Yeehaw, better get to it. Cracking that whip. Well, we've almost gotten to the motor mount bolts and shit. Figured I better take everything off the front of the motor first so I got more clearance to slide it up out of here. We're gonna cut it right here just so I can re-weld it a lot easier. Get the welder in right there, obviously. Done it before. Obviously, custom exhaust. Custom hangers. You know, that kind of shit. I just want more room and I don't want to damage the header when we're pulling the freaking motor out because we spend a lot of money on this thing just to have the motor go to shit in like obviously less than a thousand miles. Now always remember safety glasses, safety first. I like sawzalls, they're a nice, clean, fast cut. I don't care what anybody says. See how nice and tight that all fit? That was great. Oh yeah, did I mention I had to do the other side too? What, it has dual exhaust? Yeah, yeah. that's what's up. Of course it has dual exhaust, come on, man. Well, we got the headers off. That was easy, thanks to the burp gun. Now we just gotta unhook the carburetor, transmission bolts, pull that stupid distributor out of there so it doesn't get smashed, and pull the starter. But it's break time. You know what that means. 420. All right, all we got left to do is unhook the carburetor linkage and uh, pull the motor mount bolts. 
All the bell housing bolts are out, starters out. There's all that happy horse shit. Wires are all unhooked under there. I'm gonna have to probably do the front main seal on the transmission while it's out, of course. It's always a good idea to do that. Especially on a four wheel drive. Transmissions are heavy. We're gonna put it up on the cherry picker and then I'm just gonna drag the truck out from under it. That's how we're gonna do it. Old school. Well, we got her. Now all we gotta do is pull it out. That's it. Everything's all unhooked. All the wiring, everything. See you guys in the next clip.